Regional Chambers of Commerce provide a beneficial efficiency of scale to their members, delivering services like advocacy, marketing support, and additional networking opportunities. I'm Nathan O'Leary for Comcast Newsmakers on the set at the Majestic Theater in West Springfield, Massachusetts. Jeffrey Shafrida, president of Affiliated Chambers of Commerce of Greater Springfield, is here to discuss the work of that organization. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, Nathan. It's a pleasure. We're going to start with the proverbial elephant in the room, a casino in Springfield. It's, uh, it's one of our major focuses. It's a $800 million to a $1 billion economic development project is the way we look at it. Uh, we've done our due diligence. We've looked at other models throughout the country. Uh, and we've had an exhaustive study, really, on it. And we really do think that the benefits to the region far outweigh any of the negatives. And those negatives we'll certainly work on to, to make sure they're minimal. There's a saying that as the Springfield economy goes, so goes the area economy. Is there credence to that? Oh, absolutely. I, I think the, the casino may be one example that, that all of the, the, the purchases that the casino will be doing will certainly not be made in one community. It'll be made in others. And the other thing is that the major employers in Springfield, the hospitals, Mass Mutual, right. uh, Smith & Wessons, they clearly get their workforce from outside mm -hmm. the region. So a lot of folks come into Springfield, earn their money, go back to their communities, right. invest it. And vice versa, we do have a lot of folks from Springfield go outside as well. So it, it is a region, and Springfield clearly is the hub of that. When we talk about the work of the affiliated chamber, how do you support the regional economy? Well, as you mentioned in your, in your remarks, we, we really uh, provide marketing, uh, networking, and then legislative advocacy. Uh, gone are the days where a community is, is self-contained. And so we offer our members, if you will, exposure to broader markets than they normally would just in their neighborhood or their city. Right. And the same thing goes for their, the marketing and the, the uh, advocacy as well. We're in a big transition time right now in this country. Uh, when you speak of workforce development, where exactly is the need for a skilled workforce when we're talking this region? Yeah, this, this region is, is blessed with some very strong manufacturing. We're the strongest region in the state. Uh, that said, uh, precision machining has really taken off. The medical device industry really needs uh, folks with some really high mathematics skills. Uh, quite frankly, the business community maybe didn't do a good job in communicating that to our high schools and our, our uh, two-year and four-year colleges. So we find a skills gap there that the folks graduating aren't quite ready for those types of jobs. So we're trying to address that. The other area of uh, skills training uh, which, which still is fairly strong, is nursing. There's not such a skills gap there, but there may be the need for more. Uh, the nursing population, uh, the technicians in the hospitals are aging. The baby boomers are getting out. We need to make sure that the, that the, the newer folks, the, the Generation Y folks, have the yeah. skills that the hospitals are looking for. Now, would you say that uh, existing new businesses in this area face particular challenges that you're having to address? Um, you know, I think the perception a year or so ago was, especially on a federal level, that the banks weren't lending money. Uh, and, and we found a lot of our smaller businesses that were solid that were starting to believe that. Uh, we've gone to our banks and found out that that's not the, the case, that the money is available. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, the reluctance, if you will, of growth that we think right now is just this unknown on what's going on on the Washington level more so than the state. But as that gets to solidify a little bit, we're seeing more and more businesses get into that expansion mode. And finally, any impact on your members, uh, you know, as they're preparing to see about the Affordable Care Act and the fallout from that? Yeah, they're, they're, again, that's one of those, I think those one of those federal issues that's holding folks back. They don't know what the impact is. We think it will be minimal here in okay. Massachusetts because of all the changes we've already done on the state level. But it's that unknown that uh, the sooner we get into the, the federal law, I think You'll those know. unknowns clear up and we can move ahead. All right, thank you very much. Jeffrey Shafrida from the Affiliated Chambers of Commerce in Greater Springfield. Thank you for joining us as well for Comcast Newsmakers.